So when it comes to the coolant you choose, there seems to be a really dizzying array of different options to choose from. So in this video, we're just going to look at the different types of coolant. It really is critical to choose an appropriate one for your vehicle. So we're just going to look at the primary differences between these different grades of coolant and help you choose one that's appropriate for your vehicle. You've noticed that the coolant level in your engine is low and you need to top it up. There's a fatal mistake. There is a fluid that you should never put into your engine. But about 80 or 90 percent of motorists are just putting this fluid into their engine, causing all sorts of problems. But when looking at the massive array of different antifreezes and coolants on offer, it can get really confusing. So this video, we're just going to look at the main types of coolant and just give you the information you need so you can choose an appropriate coolant that's going Going to work well in your engine and help prolong the life of your engine. So coolant in the engine isn't just there to prevent it freezing. Obviously, you don't want the water inside the engine actually freezing because as water expands, it causes problems within the block. So engine designers have taken this into account. They've got core plugs that will push out and take some of that pressure, but it's still a risk. If your water in the engine freezes, you do risk cracking major components within the engine block. So antifreeze is an essential, but it doesn't just prevent freezing. It also assists the cooling. It resists corrosion inside the engine itself. It can keep the water pump working efficiently by adding a little bit of lubrication to that. Now, the average engine has got many different types of metal. So some use aluminium, others use other alloys or other types of metal. Some engines have even got special coatings in certain parts of the engine. So choosing a coolant with an additive that is not going to interfere with those metals and metal properties is really the aim that you should go for. And you can't really just go into a shop and judge the coolants by the colour. The years have gone by where you could just buy a coolant according to colour, where the colour actually meant something. It seems to be almost random now with different brands using different colours and different grades. But if you're just familiar with the contents of coolant, you can make wise decisions when it comes to choosing a coolant or an antifreeze additive to put into your engine. So the two basic types of coolant, there's ethylene glycol based coolant. Now that's the most common. It's usually green in colour and it provides excellent heat transfer properties, which is why it's been used as this component and propylene glycol based coolants which is usually a pink or an orange color, it's less toxic, so it's more environmentally friendly than ethylene glycol. But if only it was as simple as those two types. We've got IAT, inorganic additive technology, OAT, organic additive technology, HOAT, H-O-A-T, a hybrid organic acid technology, and then for the modern batch of electric cars, you've got a completely different formulation of coolant. So I won't go too much into those systems because most of our readers have got either gasoline, petrol or diesel powered cars. So IAT was used for many years, but it depletes very quickly, typically around 24,000 miles, and it needs to be replaced. They'll use inorganic salts inside, such as silicates and phosphates. And because these are inorganic, it forms a protective barrier on the metal surfaces inside the engine. The benefit of OAT, organic acid technology fluids, is that they last a lot longer, typically twice as long as the inorganic additives. But you certainly can't mix those two types. You will definitely have problems if you mix those different types. So the hybrids are often specified by manufacturers. So we see Chrysler and Ford, and they take the best components of the IAT and the OAT additives and mix them in such a way that they're not going to interfere with one another. They give you the extended life, about five years, 50,000 miles, and they won't accelerate the corrosion that goes on inside the engine. So silicate or silicate, which is often the name given to it in certain regions and locations, resists corrosion inside the engine. A lot of Volkswagen Group cars originally came with a little silicate bag which would condition 
the coolant inside the engine to add this protective layer. So if you just took that bag out, which people do because they do split over time, as if there's no silicate or silicate protection inside that coolant, it's going to degrade the engine. You're going to get more corrosion inside the engine. So it's certainly not a good idea just to remove that without changing the formulation of coolant. Just make sure that this essential component mineral is inside your engine protecting it. So silicate is good for aluminium engines, but there are also some engine types where it can be harmful. So you can see the importance of choosing the correct coolant for your engine. The manufacturer's recommendations is certainly the benchmark you should be aiming at. But bear in mind, manufacturers have often changed and improved formulations over the years. If your car is about 10, 15 years old, you may well find you can no longer buy the coolant formulation that they're recommending because it's evolved, it's moved on. So understanding how this has evolved and moved on can help you to make good decisions when it comes to coolants. So don't mix coolants. If you're adding a different type of coolant to your engine, make sure you've done a complete flush on the old coolant just to make sure there's none of that left in the engine because that can accelerate the wear and tear or the degradation on the inside of the engine due to corrosion in some cases. So you just need to be careful. Make sure that the formulation you use is complete in the system and that you're not mixing different types, particularly the IAT and the OAT types. So what's this fluid you should never ever put inside your car's engine that so many motorists do without thinking? Well, it's tap water. Tap water contains mineral deposits. In our area, it is extremely hard. There's terrific amounts of calcium deposits in our local water. You can actually see it silting up the taps in our kitchen sink and in our bathroom as well. But inside the kettle where you boil it, you notice that building up. And it's not very long before you have to completely descale your kettle in our area. So imagine what's going on inside the engine. You've got your water pump is trying its best to move this hot fluid around. But this calcium layer and all these other sediments and minerals have started to form deposits and it's clogging up the flow of water around the engine itself. So that really is a big no-no. So you should never ever put tap water into your engine. This contains mineral deposits which will build up and cause problems inside the engine. You should only use pure water, a filtered water, distilled water or a deionized water. Anything really that doesn't have those mineral deposits would be suitable to go into your car's cooling system. Tap water also has a much lower boiling point than coolants that you have in your engine. So the pressure inside the radiator and the cooling system of the car will build up much more quickly if there is no coolant present or if there's an insufficient level of coolant inside the engine. Now you can check the quality of the coolant with a very simple gravity tester. You just suck up a little bit of coolant from the expansion bottle in the top of the engine. And judging by the weight, the balls inside will float, giving you a specific gravity. And that's a good way of determining how effective the coolant is in the engine at resisting freezing and providing good effective heat transfer within the cooling component. So different brands have got different names for it. Honda use the Type 2 coolant, and that's often blue in colour. The GM, General Motors Group, in the UK, we refer to them as the Vauxhall Motor Group. They use Dex Cool, which is often red in colour. The Honda Type 2 is a silicate based coolant. Dex Cool is an OAT coolant. And then Ford have come along and they've got the Motorcraft range. And these come as IATs or HOAT just depending on the product and the application, which makes sense because the range of engines that Ford offer vary considerably. They've got large naturally aspirated engines. They've got small turbocharged engines, three cylinder, six, eight cylinder engines. So they're all going to have different needs when it comes to the formulation. So for modern engines, you're really looking for something that is silicone and phosphate free. Those two components will play havoc on components in the engine, particularly the catalyst and the oxygen sensors. So in most cases, you'll buy a concentrated form of this additive and you'll dilute it in a ratio recommended by the manufacturer of the coolant itself, which is generally a 50-50 ratio, but there are some variations. So check the instructions before you do this. You've got your handbook, 
you've got the manufacturer's recommendations and you can even consult your local dealer and see what they are recommending. So it's vitally important to choose the right coolant for your engine. It protects the engine, it resists corrosion and it efficiently allows the engine to transfer heat between the block of the engine and the cooling system, which keeps everything else running smoothly. So never overlook the importance of having the right coolant inside your engine. So I hope this video has been useful to you. Please boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. I've lined this video up for you that you should find interesting. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. We'd love you to stay tuned. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in this next video.